And often before our council meetings, we have time to do special honorary resolutions on topics that are important in our city. We have two this morning. We'll start. We'll start the first one, which is uh, um, an, a resolution renewing our commitment to end gun violence in the wake of the tragedy in Parkland, Florida. And I want to invite our guests who are here from various organizations and some of the students who've been involved to come on up, uh, along with Mayor Fry and myself. The entire Minneapolis City Council is going to read this resolution today. And we don't often do that, but this topic is so important to all of us that we wanted to make this powerful statement that this topic and our students and our community leaders who are leading the fight against gun violence in our community have the full weight and support of the whole city council and the mayor of Minneapolis. So I believe we're gonna start with council member Palmasano on the first uh, clause of our resolution and go along for the council. Ready? Um. Whereas every day, on average, 96 Americans are killed by gun violence, including seven children, and? Whereas Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed with guns than people in other developed countries, and? Whereas in 2016, 1,600 American children were killed with guns and at least 6,000 shot and injured. That equates to an average of 23 children shot every day. And? Whereas our schools should be safe environments where students and teachers need not fear gun violence. And? Whereas children born in the United States after the mass shooting of students in Columbine on April 20th, 1999, have known no other reality but one of fear of and preparation for gun violence in their schools and? Whereas on February 14th, 2018, a former student at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School in Parkland, Florida, opened fire with a semi-automatic rifle, killing 17 and injuring 14 students and adults and? Whereas in response to this most recent series of school shootings throughout their lives, the youth, youth of the city of Minneapolis are calling on their elected leaders to do more to end gun violence in our schools and? Whereas gun violence is a concern not only in our schools but across our communities and every person in Minneapolis deserves to live in a neighborhood free from the impacts of gun violence and? Whereas the city of Minneapolis is committed to a holistic approach to ending gun violence in every Minneapolis neighborhood and? Whereas, whereas investing in violence prevention produces measurable results, in 2017, 942 guns were recovered, a percent increase of 54.6 over 2016 that also resulted in an 18.4 decrease in gunshot victims. Whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve is one of our most serious and fundamental responsibilities of elected officials. And whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens must not be made at the expense of keeping guns away from dangerous people. And whereas the city of Minneapolis has adopted a legislative agenda related to gun violence prevention, which includes opposition to state preemption of local gun control laws, opposing federal conceal and carry reciprocity laws, and which includes support for stricter gun laws, including required background checks for all gun sales and a statewide ban on the sale of assault weapons. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the mayor and Minneapolis City Council that this resolution renews our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands, to encourage responsible gun ownership, and to support legislative change at all levels of government to help keep our children safe. We strongly support the efforts in our community to prevent the tragic effects of gun violence and to honor and value all human lives. Thank you so much. And now, um, Mayor Fry, do you want to say anything before we turn it over to the community? Uh, thank you, Council President. As we all know, this is uh, a timely and, and critical issue, not just for the city of Minneapolis, but the entire country. And I'm proud to see young people leading the way. Uh, I mean, they are the NRA's worst nightmare right now. And uh, as we look to a ban of assault rifles, as we look to universal background checks, these are projects that we've been working on for quite some time, but I, I'd feel a whole lot of hope because of you. 
want to thank to all of the students. We had hundreds of young people from across the city march to City Hall earlier this week. We want you to know that we hear you, we support you, and we are going to work with all of our energy to uh, end gun violence in our community. Now I'm going to turn it over to folks from Moms Demand Action and our student leaders who are here to say anything, especially with an eye toward are there things that what can we do? What can we as average people in Minneapolis do to help support your efforts? Thank you, I wanna thank everybody for that. That was really important to have the support of our community. Um, my name is Molly, I'm the Minneapolis chapter co-lead for Moms Demand Action. Um, and I really do wanna to defer to the kids right now too, to the students who have, have really sparked something. Um, we do have a lot going on. We have a lot of events coming up. Uh, there are chapters in Minneapolis and throughout the Metro that you can get involved in. Um, I think everybody was feeling that, what can we do? We had over 150 people at our Minneapolis meeting on Wednesday night with that same question, and there's just a real energy. Um, we also had some of the students who had been here earlier in the day show up and talk to us and really um, get us even more energy. Um, so just one simple thing, the, the simplest thing you can do to find out what's going on is text ACT, A-C-T, to 644-33. Um, students can also text STUDENT to that same 644-33 and Moms Demand Action in every town will direct you to things going on in your uh, communities and things that you can do. So that's my simple act to lead to more action and then I'm gonna turn it over because. We wanna give our young people the last word today. Um, I'm Iris from Washburn and um, I just wanted to thank the community for being behind our backs and we have a few protests coming up because this is only a smart, small part of what we want to be done throughout the upcoming year. Um, we have a protest March 14th, uh, March 24th, and April 20th. And for you average Americans to do is to just be there and have our backs because that's just what means the world to us and there's nothing more that we want than you guys to be there and to understand what we are trying to say and trying to get our safety and try not to be scared in schools anymore. Hi, I'm Mia, and um, so like there's a protest, there's one on March 14th, which my school is participating in. We're gonna walk out for 17 minutes, one minute for each victim. And then there's the one on March 24th, which we're also looking at getting involved in. And I, going off what Iris said, I think definitely just showing that you're there for us and supporting us is probably the best thing because as kids, if we can't vote, this is about the biggest say we can have right now. And for some of us, we will be able to vote in the next election and we'll have a bigger say. But right now, having adults listen to us and teachers listen to us, I think that's the best thing to do because otherwise it's kind of scary walking out of school and not having people support you. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. This is for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Thank you so much. We have a second resolution, and this is uh, recognizing the National uh, MS Society's MS Awareness Week, and I want to welcome council members Palmasano and Jenkins and Schrader. And I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam President. If I could ask those that are here from the MS Society to join us. Every year for the past four years, we've done a resolution um, in collaboration with the MS Society. It helps us join together across the country and recognize this as a national week. Um, and because MS can be largely an invisible disease, and yet the number of people in our country that live with this is roughly the population of Minneapolis, it's important for us to, to be here and recognize. We have with us here today Dan Anderson from the N National MS Society, Sarah Dannon, um, Will Ziegenhagen, who also is a constituent of Council Vice President Jenkins, um, Robert Van Zant, and Holly Anderson. So thank you for being with us here today. I'm going to read the resolution, um, if I may, and then um, I'd also like to turn it over to some of my colleagues who have more to share on that. So this is about recognizing the National MS Society's MS Awareness Week in Minneapolis. 
Multiple sclerosis is an unpredictable and often disabling disease to which there is no cure of the central nervous system that interrupts the flow of information between the brain and the body. And whereas, although there has been significant progress in MS research, there are only 12 disease-modifying treatments for the relapsing and remitting form of the disease and none for the more debilitating primary and progressive form. And it's estimated that nearly 2.3 million people in the world currently live with MS. Over 400,000 people in the U.S. are living with MS, including more than 10,000 people in Minnesota, which ranks actually among the highest in prevalence across the country. Um, the National MS Society exists to help each person address the challenges of living with MS by fun funding some cutting-edge ed research, helping with professional education, and providing programs and services that help people with MS and their families move their lives forward. MS Awareness Week is held the first week of March to unite people in Minnesota, the country, and worldwide to fight to end it, to create connections, and educate people about what it is and how they can make a difference. So. Therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby declare the March 14th, 2018 to be Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Day in the city of Minneapolis and have the 35W bridge lit in orange on this day to commemorate it. Um, so uh, this is something that we've been doing for four years, but I am so fortunate on this council to have with me a couple of colleagues who have a little bit more that they'd like to share. Um, and then we'll turn it over to the community. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Palmasano for introducing this and your, your leadership on this. Um, I'm proud to support this resolution. Uh, this is an issue that is uh, very personal to me. Uh, my mom has uh, multiple sclerosis, and uh, it's a difficult thing for a family to go through. Um, it's important that we as a community bring attention to this issue and especially make it clear uh, that we support and rec recognize all those grappling with the disease and their caregivers. Thank you, Councilmember Schrader and Councilmember uh, Palmasano for introducing this resolution uh, for four years now and, and bringing awareness to this issue. I wanted to speak today just to, um, you know, Many people have have asked me, you know, what is going on with the cane that I have been carrying around, and for for quite some time, I really didn't know what was happening. But last August, um, in the middle of my city council campaign, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, I'm fortunate to have been diagnosed with the relapsing remitting form of the disease, which does have some, um, some pretty positive um, management uh, medications, and so um, I've been managing the disease quite well, and, and really, um, I think, getting close to where I was prior to learning about this diagnosis, but uh, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, and autoimmune diseases impact the black community um, very significantly. And while no one knows what the cause of multiple sclerosis and many other autoimmune diseases, um, what we do know is that um, stress and oppression and racism and sexism and all of these oppressive factors in our community does impact people's ability to manage the disease. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to become a city council member is to begin to address those issues. So I invite you to help me overcome some of those issues as well as support the work of the MS Society in continuing to bring awareness and understanding to this issue. Um, I really wanted to, to make this statement today because people are living with multiple sclerosis, contributing to their communities, being active members of their um, families and neighborhoods, and, and I'm so 
so proud and, and thrilled to have the support of my family, um, including my beautiful partner, Marae Regulus, who is here today. Thank you for, for your love and support, and um, please support the MS Society. So thank you. Thank you. You know, we said at the beginning that this is largely an invisible disease, and I so admire, I, I've admired my colleague Andrea Jenkins for a long time, and I just love her work and constantly working to destigmatize something like this. So thank you for having the courage to come forward. And I also wanted to pass the microphone to others that are here today from the community in case they'd like to say a few words. Thank you, um, Ms. Jenkins, for your your bravery today to share your story um, so that others can understand and um, and be aware about MS because it can be an invisible disease. We this will be MS Awareness Week, the week of March 14th, and we ask everyone to take action to try to break through MS. And taking action might be talking to your legislators. It might be uh, signing up for a walk on May 6th. It may be um, doing one of our bike rides, and it, and it could be just sh learning more about MS. So we invite you to please do that, and thank you very much for this. Thank you for being here. Thank you everyone so much. And I think, um, I just thank you Councilmember Jenkins again for all of your leadership in so many ways and your bravery on this. You have the full support of the city council and all of us here as you navigate this. Thank you. All right, with that, we will call to order the regular meeting of the City Council for February 9th. Mm -hmm. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Here. Fletcher. Here. Jenkins. Here. Schrader. Here. Warsami. Present. Cunningham. Present. Ellison. Present. Goodman. Present. Johnson. Here. Palmasano. Present. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. President Bender. Here. There are 13 members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. The next item is the adoption of our agenda. We have two amendments. First, under the order of resolutions, a motion to add the honorary resolution related to gun safety that we just presented. And second, a motion by Council Member Cunningham to add the introduction of an ordinance under the order of ordinance introductions related to conduct on premises. A copy of that motion and the notice has been distributed at your desks. Are there any other amendments to our agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries and the agenda is adopted. Next, we have the acceptance of the minutes of the February 9th, February 9th meeting. I will just note, I think I misspoke at the beginning and today is February 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure everyone knew that, but uh, okay. So these are the minutes from our last meeting on February 9th. Uh, may I please have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries and those minutes are accepted. Next is the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to proper committees. May I have a motion? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. The next order of business on our agenda is the reports of the standing committees, beginning with the report of the Economic Development and Regulatory Services Committee, chaired by Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. The Economic Development and Regulatory Services Committee is bringing seven items forward for approval to this morning. Item one is the Liquor, Business, and Gambling License um, Annual Agenda. 
Items two and three are licensed settlement conferences, recommendations. Items four, five, and six and seven are all contract amendments. With that, I'll move items one through seven for approval this morning. Councilmember Goodman has moved approval of the committee's report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. The next committee to report is the Health, Environment, Civil Rights, and Engagement Committee given by the Chair, Councilmember Cunningham. Thank you, Madam President. The Health, Environment, Civil Rights, and Engagement Committee brings forward five items for approval today. The first is the a Southside Green Zone Task Force appointment approving Darius Gray, seat nine, ward nine, to a one-year um, unexpired term ending August 31st, 2018. Just wanted to share real quickly that Darius Gray is a community member who works, worships, and plays within the Phillips and Cedar Riverside neighborhoods as a current UMN student and environmental justice advocate. The second is contract amendment with Riverview Windows for lead remediation work. Three and four are an authorizing practicum experience at St. Kate's University, University of St. Thomas, and uh, University of Minnesota. And the fifth item is the 2017 Joint Disparity Report. Uh, I, I move approval of these items. Councilmember Cunningham has moved the committee's report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. All right. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next is the report of the Housing Policy and Development Committee given by the committee chair, Council Member Gordon. Thank you very much, Madam President. The committee's <laughs> bringing forward eight items for consideration today. Um, before I read through them, I also want to note that there was another item on the agenda. We had an uh, excellent presentation from our innovation team on evictions, and I encourage my colleagues and others to um, to look at that. There's, that was just a receive and file, so we won't be voting on it. The items that I'll be moving forward, uh, the first four concern land sales. Number one is a land sale at 3234 Humboldt Avenue South. Number two is a land sale at 3734 Fremont. Number three is a land sale at 3439 Fremont. It's both Avenue North. And the fourth item is uh, awards from our Minnesota Homes Land Sales and Development Assistant Funding. There's actually 25 properties there. I won't read through them all, but that's a fantastic uh, program, I think, and a great result. Fifth item is approving public housing authority reappointments. Uh, these are for three-year terms of Faith Zhang and James Rosenbaum. We're also waiving the residency, residency requirement for James. The sixth is acknowledgement of a receptivity to a Livable Communities Act funding award uh, form in support of the award of Metropolitan Council Liv Livability Communities Local Housing Incentive Account. The seventh item is extending exclusive development rights for Sherman Associates on the West Broadway Curve project. And the eighth item concerns the 2017 Metropolitan Council Livability Communities um, and the Transit Oriented Development um, Awards. And I will move all items forward for approval. Thank you, Council Member Gordon. He's moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next, we have the report of the Inter Intergovernmental Relations Committee chaired by Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. We bring two items forward today. The first is an extension of our federal lobbying contract. The second are uh, amendments to our legislative agenda and policy positions, notably uh, strengthening our positions on gun control. Uh, combining two of our documents into one, just for simplification, and approving uh, a number of other minor changes and technical updates. I'll move both items for approval. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. He's moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, 
Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Worsani. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Next is the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee given by the Committee Chair, Councilmember Cano. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee brings forward four items for approval. Item number one is a contract with Hennepin Technical College for training of police cadets. Item number two is a contract with Hennepin Healthcare Systems to be the sole provider of emergency medical uh, services training programs. Item number three is a gift acceptance of exercise equipment from Anytime Fitness to the Minneapolis Fire Department. And our final item is a Minneapolis Police Department response to quarterly reporting staff direction and the findings of the MPD body worn camera pro program audit. I would like to move uh, these four items forward for approval. Thank you, Council Member Cano, who's moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. <coughs> Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. <coughs> Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next is the report of the Transportation and Public Works Committee from the Committee Chair Council Member Reich. Thank you, Madam President. The uh, committee considered seven items. Uh, item one is the 2018-2023 Customized Safety Training and Training Services Vendor Pool RFP. Item two is the 12th Street Bikeway Project Layout. Item three is the University of Minnesota Project uh, Protected Bikeway Project Layout. Uh, item four is the Contract Amendment with Specialized Service uh, Environmental Technologies for Yard Waste Street Sweeping and Organic Material Processing Services. Uh, item five uh, was presented as a contract amendment, but I'll be moving to delete that item as it was in fact a uh, purchase order and thereby would not need formal council action. Uh, item six is the agreement with Minnesota Department of Transportation and Minneapolis Public Park and Rec for trail, sidewalk, signal construction on Industrial Boulevard at I-35W. And item seven is the 2018 Minneapolis Open Streets, uh, approving the list of routes for the 2018 Minneapolis Open Streets uh, activities. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I will be moving all items, but I do move to delete item five from the agenda as stated. Thank you, Council Member Reich, uh, who's moved the committee agenda, deleting item number five. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries. The report is adopted. Next is the report of the Ways and Means Committee presented by the <laughs> Committee Chair Council Member Wasami. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The Ways and Means Committee brings forward 18 items for approval. Um, items number one to six are legal settlements. Item number seven is a contract amendment with the Center for Energy and Environment for building benchmarking and disclosure services. Item number eight is a contract amendment with Messenger Construction Company, Inc for contract closeout of the Guard Shack replacement project. Item number nine is a contract with Life Tech Services for emergency <coughs> medical services at the Minneapolis Convention Center. Item number 10 is an amendment to the membership agreement with Northside Economic Opportunity Network for shared workspace at 1007 West Broadway Avenue. Item number 11 is a contract amendment with Clever Design for additional analysis and design work on the impound lot improvement project. Item number 12, is amending the settlement amount for the partial acquisition of 2547 Fifth Street Northeast from Acorn Mini Storage for the East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility Project. Item number 13 is acquisition of 2651 University Avenue Northeast from Fuller Avenue Estates LLC for the East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility Project. And item number 14 is a contract amendment with Wilson Development Services LLC for tenant relocation services. Item number 15 is a contract with Pi Consulting and Engineering for building enclosure commissioning services for the consolidated office building project. Item number 16 is a contract with DLR Group Inc. for furniture fixtures and equipment design consulting services for the consolidated office building. And item number 17 is the appointed position in the Neighborhood and Community Relations Department for the Director of Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs and item number 18 is a 2018 Capital Long Range Improvement Committee uh, schedule, rating guidelines, and recommended net debt bond uh, resource levels. And I move approval of all these 18 items. 
Thank you. Council Member Wasami has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Wasami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries. The report is adopted. <coughs> and finally, we have the report of the Zoning and Planning Committee shared by Council Member Schrader. The uh, Zoning and Planning Committee has uh, seven items for approval today. Uh, the first is the denial of an appeal submitted by Don uh, Gerberding um, for a variance in site plan review. Um, in addition to the, uh, along with the committee's recommendation to deny the appeal, we're also adopting new findings prepared by the city attorney's office. Uh, second is the denial of an appeal uh, for a conditional use permit and variance site plan review for the Sons of Norway site. The third is a rezoning and alley vacation for Wagner Investment Services. Uh, that we are recommending approval. Uh, fourth is uh, the rezoning of Abubakar uh, Asadiq Islamic Center. The fifth is a rezoning for James McNeil Architecture and Design. Uh, the sixth is the denial of an application for A&M Market. And the seventh is an alley vacation for the Minneapolis Public Schools. Thank you. And, I, and I move these forward for approval. Thank you, Councilmember Schrader has moved adoption of the committee's report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. No on two and three, aye on the remainder. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes on the report except for items two and three, which have 12 ayes and one nay. That carries and the report is adopted. The next order of business is reports of our special committees and we have a report from the executive committee presented by uh, Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the executive committee submits three appointments of charter department heads that have been nominated by Mayor Fry. Um, those include the director of public works, city attorney and the city assessor. I understand that you have made the following referrals for each of those appointments. For the public works director, the public hearing will be conducted by the Transportation and Public Works Committee at its regular committee meeting on Tuesday, February 27th, starting at 10 a.m. For the city attorney, the public hearing will be conducted by the Enterprise Committee at its regular Committee, committee meeting schedule for Thursday, March 1st, beginning at 1.30 p.m. And for the city assessor, the public hearing will be conducted by the Ways and Means Committee at its regular meeting the following Tuesday, March 6th, beginning at 1.30 p.m. With that, Madam President, I move approval of those referrals for public hearings as required under the city charter. Council Vice President Jenkins has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsama. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. We have one notice today, which is the notice that we added to the agenda for Council Member Cunningham to amend Title 12, Chapter 244 of the Housing Maintenance Code to amend provisions related to conduct on licensed premises. That notice is given. Our introduction calendar has one item today. That is pursuant to previous notice, the introduction, first reading and referral of the subject matter of an ordinance related to workplace regulations, clarifying the rules on the accrual and use of sick and safe time hours under the ordinance. The matter will be referred to the, uh, now the uh, PECE committee at its next meeting, which is coming this Monday, February 26th, or actually soon to be, we haven't taken that action yet. Uh, but it will be coming to the committee chaired by Council Member Cunningham uh, to be named shortly uh, this Monday, February 26th. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. Under resolutions this morning, we have the resolution on uh, preventing uh, gun violence that was added as an amendment. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That carries and the resolution is adopted.
Under the order of unfinished business, we have the resolution recognizing National Multiple, Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week. Is there any discussion? Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to point out that unfortunately on the resolution before you, it says that MS week is the first week in March, and in fact, it is the second, as we talked about on the stand today. So it's the day, it's the week that includes March 14th, which is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Day. Um, and I would just like to submit that before you for that administrative <laughs> error. Absolutely. Thank you, Councilmember Palmasano. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> and that carries. The resolution is adopted. Under the order of new business, we have a resolution that retitles our standing committee on health, environment, civil rights, and engagement. This is presented at the request of Councilmember Cunningham, the chair of the committee. I'm happy to recognize you, Councilmember Cunningham, if you have any remarks to make on this. Thank you so much, Madam President. I just, I wanted to, what we're looking to do is just add public to make it public health, environment, civil rights, and engagement. The purpose behind that is to clarify the jurisdiction between the private health care sector and the city for uh, better public accountability. Um, also, the department was nationally accredited by the Public Health Accreditation Board in 2016, and the committee name should reflect this achievement, and also it would be known as PECE or PEACE for short. Thank you, Councilmember Cunningham. Is there any discussion on the renaming of the committee? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Worsani. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries, and the uh, new name has been adopted. That completes the business items on our agenda. Uh, we will be adjourning to a closed session, but I'll pause and see if any of my colleagues have any announcements before the adjournment. With that, a motion to adjourn is in order. That's a motion to adjourn, adjourn to room 315 for the purposes of conducting a closed session related to the litigation matter of Walter Lewis Franklin II versus the city of Minneapolis. May I have a motion, please? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries and we are adjourned. Thank you.